In today's 10 minute chess opening video, you're going to conclude your study of the d5 c6 setup that you might have started in my other clip uh, about the Karo Khan, uh, and that's called the Slav Defense. And the Slav Defense is essentially the d5 c6 setup against everything. Uh, in particular, we'll start out with d4, d5, uh, and then white plays the queen's gambit, and you respond with c6. From this point, obviously, I want to give you a breakdown of how to play this system and its general ideas. I'm going to cover some of the main positions. Obviously, I won't be able to go super in-depth uh, into certain variations, but that's for you to do if you enjoy this video and you seem like you would benefit uh, from playing this repertoire. So, from here, uh, the most common setup is knight f3, knight f6, and knight c3. The uh, main position with the three knights, obviously you have not been able to put a knight here. Uh, Black has a big decision to make right now. Do you play the open Slav, which is when you take on c4 for a brief moment uh, and then just op uh, develop your pieces naturally uh, and get a solid structure? Or do you enter a semi-Slav, which is this setup, with uh, the triangle of pawns and the knight on f6, uh, do you enter uh, a Shebenenko Slav with a6 and try to play b5? Uh, or do you play g6, which is called the Schlechter Slav? Uh, which, as far as I know, these are kind of the biggest main lines. Now, uh, just going into some of these, you know, dc4, you've got to learn uh, uh, a4, which is the main line. Uh, and that is designed to prevent you from playing pawn to b5 and solidifying your pawn. But there's other stuff here, like uh, e4 immediately, which is known as the Geller Gambit. Uh, if you want to uh, delve into these variations, you, you need to have a pretty strong memory as is. Uh, if you want to play the Slav as a more kind of system-based player, you can consider the Semislav. But the Semislav is a little bit passive. Uh, but let me just kind of show you how to navigate these more closed positions. Uh, if cd5 happens, I mean, it's it's actually funny. Sometimes you can take this way and then put your knight on c6. But in general, um, for example, after something like bishop g5, you already put your knight on d7. And so you would be capturing with the e-pawn. We saw this also in the Stonewall video. So normally you would be capturing uh, with the with the e-pawn and that will ultimately open your bishop. So you go for something like knight d7 with this triangle of pawns, let's say e3. I'm not even going to necessarily name the names of the variations because I'm trying to give you a more, um, less a theoretical approach and more of a system approach. Uh, but of course, if you're like 1800, 2000, you want to get like the best stuff out there. I think Sam Shankland recently made a course. So there's variations with uh, knight d7 that involve playing queen a5, bishop b4, and trying to play knight e4 using this pin on the king. That's called the Cambridge Spring setup. Uh, but in general, I think a good a good kind of practice would be develop the bishop to either of these squares, let's say to d6, and then you can play something like b6, bishop b7. And so that would maybe look something like this, this, this. The drawback of this system is despite it being super solid a good player with the white pieces we will play the move e4 at the right moment uh and kind of shatter the center and get a nice and an aggressive setup now that's why you should learn the theory if you are interested in this setup but in general you know if you get somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing uh this is kind of what you go for with black and you know the bishop could be here if it means getting in the way of the pin uh but I, again you know, the point of this uh, series is to learn an opening in 10 minutes or less, right? So I want to show you that you can play this against anything besides e4. That would be the Karo Khan. So for example, let's say you get an English, you would play c6 and then d5. Knight c3, d5, and now it's very difficult to avoid uh, a mainline Slav defense. Now, white can play the d4 systems in a variety of ways here. And I mean, you would need a weapon against the London, uh, which is not really part of this video because it's kind of just focusing on the Slav, but as a d4 player, an anti-d4 weapon, you can't just play c6 against everything, but you can try, you know, you can try to solidify your center, play bishop f5 and then knight d7, um, but your biggest decision would obviously come right around here, uh, and knight c3 is not the only move. I should say that white can play something also like g3, 
uh, and try to play a Catalan system. Now against this, you can develop your bishop maybe, and then play e6. Um, you can also maybe play something like e3. Uh, your opponent, excuse me, might play something like e3. And then again, you know, bishop f5, rather than getting stuck behind the structure, would be good. And then followed by knight d7 and bishop d6. The only drawback of playing a very early bishop move, like for example here, is that you've got to be wary of queen b3. Queen b3 is a very nasty little move. Uh, it attacks b7, it targets the center, uh, and if you're not careful, uh, disasters could await you. Uh, but again, uh, at the sub, maybe 17, 1600 level, I want to I wanna just give like an arbitrary number. Not a lot of people are going to be taking advantage of your setup with queen b3. They're just not, because uh, they're not used to early queen moves in the opening. And then if you get away with getting this setup, this is the perfect setup. Because your bishop is outside the pawn chain and you're basically playing the London system but with the black pieces. So that's a little bit about the Slav defense. It's a really good complement uh, to, you know, the Karo Khan. You can even try to start some games with c6, you know, and then maybe they'll play e4 and now you've got a Karo Khan. So the two of them kind of go together. There is a bit of overlap, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't try to play c6 in every single game that you play. Uh, but I hope that's kind of a nice introduction to these structures. Uh, I, I would just get playing, you know, I would just kind of go get playing and shoot for positions that look uh, kind of similar to something like this. Right, once again, you know, here e6, dc4, or try to go for this bishop f5, obviously, maybe you, you know, you might get punished, but e6, knight d7, bishop e7, castles, uh, and then looking to expand slowly the center with the bishop on b7. Hopefully this was helpful, I know... You know, the video is designed to be 10 minutes long, uh, but really, I can't really beat around the bush. That is the essence of the Slav defense. I gave you the branches of the variations. Now it is up to you to go find uh, either an o a official opening training tool on it or uh, just get to practice and uh, see if you like it. Thanks so much for watching. As always, uh, I always look forward to your comments. So today... Uh, let me know what your favorite food is in the comments below or just any other comments uh, and I will look forward to seeing you uh, on some of my other videos.